McDermott, um, and I'm an uh, assistant professor of environmental studies um, at New York University. Um, and I'm a climate modeler by training, and I um, look at the impact and evaluate the impact of climate change on agriculture, but also um, of agriculture and land use on our environmental systems. Um, and so I've been at NYU for one year now and hope to continue. A lot of these groups, and you know, that, that's a very true observation, and it's actually an observation that people in my department have been really concerned with for a while in the sense that we have sort of the biggest host of, of denialists. I think part of that stems from kind of the way that we evolved as a country as opposed to Europe or as opposed to, I mean, Australia has a fairly large, not denialist, but kind of skeptic community, but they're a country of 20 million people, right? So the, the magnitude doesn't tend to be as strong and it's not as far right, I suppose, um, as it is here. I think that when you live in a country that's been the hub historically, not currently, but historically of manufacturing and sort of the development of some of these industries, right? Your sort of um, natural resource industries and the industries that use those natural resources, right? I mean, this is sort of the, the, the crib of a lot of these industries, even though they've moved offshore recently, right? Um, I think when you have that sort of legacy and a legacy that is, is great, but is so deeply embedded in individuality, right? And sort of um, having individual rights and individual, you know, and sort of that kind of liberalized economy in that way, right? Um, I think that it's sort of a natural extension then to be very, you know, and I feel like denialism is, is sort of the most outward facing um, uh, mask for, a true fear that everything that we've worked for as a country in terms of what got us to how successful we are is in jeopardy, right? And, and kind of compromising what we think are some of our ideals. And I think, you know, the focus should be less on the denialism. And there's been a lot of study to show that that denialism is potentially very manufactured, right? There was actually a great book that came out by Naomi Oreske it's called The Merchants of Doubt, right? And it has been made into a movie where she looks at basically how embedded manufacturing denialism has been, right, ever since. I mean, and she actually takes it back, not just to the tobacco industry, but also um, fire retardants and mattresses and sort of how this, how this has been architectured over time. So the denialist front, I find to be quite specific um, and something that, in my opinion, is important, but I think that we need not waste our time on trying to solve denialism, right? There's a host of people in this country that, you know, that might ascribe to that skepticism or denialism, and it's not because, you know, they necessarily are denialists, it's just because what they're exposed to makes them afraid that stifling our growth and enforcing um, caps and emissions and things, that's been equated with, with you know, taking us back, right, to the, to the 19th century. It's been equated with um, restrictions in, in how we live our lives, and that's not the case. So I think what needs to happen is, um, and in this country specifically, because of what we've developed, what we've accomplished, sort of what, how, how unique our upbringing is, has been, you know, compared to, you know, much older societies and other societies. It's a very unique and, and wonderful kind of development. So I think where the focus needs to be is not so much educating people about climate change, because again, you can talk until you're blue in the face and I don't think the data makes a difference to people, but educating them about how you know, investing in renewables, investing in alternatives, uh, perhaps consuming less need not be equated with some limiting, stifling lifestyle, that we can have really fulfilling lives and we can have objects. You know, if, if you do want that kind of, you know, object-oriented lifestyle, you can have that as well too. I'm not saying you can have it all. You might have less, but we can have higher quality lives that involve owning a little bit less. Um, and there are multiple ways of going about doing that for everything from investing in alternatives and creating jobs and fostering creativity and development in that field to even just investing in products that you don't throw away, right? Products that are high quality and good and make you feel like it's luxurious, but that are crafted well and things that you don't waste, right? Um, and I think that's true everything from your clothes to your furniture, to your food, to your cars, to you know everything along those lines. So I think that's where the education component needs to be, not so much in trying to get people to realize climate change is real.